Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to The Writing Life. I'm Stephen W. Long. Uh, today we've got uh, a return guest, actually, uh, Norm uh, Tognazzini. And I, I'm, he's a cool guy anyway, but uh, multi-talented. And let me kind of start down the list. Um, just found out basketball player, mm -hmm. musician, actor, novelist, playwright. Any other big ones I'm missing? Uh, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, okay. <laughs> well, welcome. You've got to so, be an entrepreneur to. Uh, yeah, or a little crazy, but maybe yeah. that's redundant. <laughs> um, so, Norm, welcome back. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I looked, and it was, uh, I th gosh, was it a year and a half, I think, September oh. of 16 that hmm. we were last here. And uh, <clears throat> I was uh, sort of reviewed that. Um, at that time, you had a play in production. Mm -hmm. at Gallery, and it was uh, The Gravity of Love? Correct. Yeah? I, I think that had just ended, The Gravity just of Love. Just ended, mm -hmm. okay. And then when we talked, you were working on another play. Uh, didn't want to give any details, which I completely understand, because uh, I think there's a, you, you have some energy, at least that's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about it, you sort of dispel that energy. And I don't know if that's what you had in mind. Uh, well, that's part of it. And then also just, uh, you know, the... The creative ideas, ideas are a dime a dozen, uh, you let them out, let good ones out, and somebody else is going to run with it. Yeah. So, and, but that play is done and, right. and um, has, is moving on, okay. and two others are done beyond that. And well, then I just finished a, um, another one, a oh. one act. Okay. So. so that's what I wanted to ask you about. I was mm -hmm. leading up to the, the one that you gave us a little hint of. Uh, featured dead people. Right. Okay. Now, is that the one that we're going to see here in a few months? No. The okay. One, the one that you'll see uh, in uh, August at the gallery, uh, second, third, and fourth, is uh, called Becoming Brandy. Okay. And it's a uh, social comedy dealing with uh, social issues, mainly equality, uh, women's equality. And... Um, it's, uh, I use a lot of comedic gags to talk about, you know, what, what is a very important issue and sure. has been for uh, years and years, sure. uh, but we're still struggling with the concept of that. So it's... Uh, uh, if I can stop sure. for just a minute, mm -hmm. equality would be... Political equality, social... Uh, uh, social equality... Um, Sexual equality, um, gender equality. Okay. Um, and it and it, it, it doesn't. It's not that it drifts all over the place, but it does uh, center on um, you know women's rights to express themselves in certain ways. Uh, I came up with the idea of just reading an article on a, another article on on uh, the pay gap in right. all industries. Okay. And so I sure. took that and ran with it and then just added a lot of other features right. to that um, story. And it's, uh, it's, it's got uh, some great uh, sight gags in it that, that represent um, equality in a way. And that is where you have, uh, there's uh, two couples and unbeknownst to, they don't know each other, but they both bet their uh, partners that uh, the women do that uh, in order to prove equality they convince each other to dress as the opposite sex so uh, and then you know go out into the into the world so to speak okay so um, you run across you know during the play you run across all kinds of situations where they have to uh, you know speak in their voice or speak in the voice of how they're dressed, you know, male or female and so forth. Oh, my so, goodness. Okay. I, so I, it's a challenge for the actors. Oh, yeah. You know. um, well, that brings up a lot of, a lot of stuff. What was, uh, oh my, what was the Tony Randall movie? Was it Seven Year Itch? Uh, or, that or, was one of his movies, Seven Yeah, Year but Itch. this was uh, gender. Uh, they, were, they were on a train. and. Oh, no, that's... Um, 
Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon, yeah. Um, and uh, Tony, Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis, yeah. Right. So some it, like it hot. Some like it hot. Okay. Right. So that, uh, you know, that concept. Actually, that's a Shakespearean concept. Okay. Sure. Um, and uh, in fact, one of the people auditioning last night, the auditions were last night, um, mentioned how Shakespearean it was, but there are also other elements um, uh, to it beyond Shakespeare. So, getting yeah. into Greek theater, you know. Okay. Go go back a ways. I'm pulling from all my knowledge. Here. Yeah, and and just I'm not sure I'm up to speed on this. So the the people represent themselves as a, as the other gender. Right. Okay. So that they can live, you know, walk in someone else's shoes, so okay. to speak. So. You know. Um, and it has a surprise ending, of course. So. Well, don't tell us or no, we'll be no, surprised. No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, I want to see that. Uh, you know, I was going to say that uh, how timely, for one thing, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, with the Me Too movement and just all of the things that were, I mean, we knew a lot about a lot of this, uh, uh, the pay gap and so on. I don't know that we really understood the, the pervasiveness of uh, sexual harassment. No, I don't think, uh, and I don't think people, a lot of people still do. And, yeah. But that has been, you know, that brought to mind when that first came out this time right. in such a big way, it brought to mind so many instances just in, in, you know, with people that I knew, um, you know, and did I stand up for them? Did I, right? you know, things like that, that, you know, maybe I could have done something more, so. Well, you know, I heard a, a saying one time, when I knew better, I did better. Mm -hmm. So we know better now and right, we'll, exactly. we'll, try to, we'll try to do better. Um, but you talked about Shakespeare, and, and one of my favorites is uh, Shakespeare in Love, which is not. Oh, yes. I guess strictly Shakespearean, but no. uh, when when she she plays the part of a man because mm -hmm. women weren't allowed to do that, right? So that was a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. mistaken identity. Uh, oh yes, th that's pervasive. Um, I, I guess I, I was. Th this is a serious topic, but I think sometimes I don't know if we put up a shield. You know, we're resistant maybe to hearing, being lectured to, mm -hmm. but comedy gets right in there, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, you had something to say, I think. Mm -hmm. I did, and I chose, uh, you know, that avenue, that that genre to to express it. Because I mean, you can go talk to your blue in the face, sure, uh, in a serious manner. But if you bring some comedy into it, it does. Yeah, it does make more of a point, I think. Yeah, yeah. and when you had the idea, <clears throat> um, so. The show's about writing. I mean, I, I love all the other aspects of it, but I want to kind of talk about almost the mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. So you, the idea came first. I guess mm -hmm. you wanted to, to uh, address this subject. Is that mm -hmm. okay? And then did you say, well, what the, the most effective way to do this is comedy, or is that just you? No, because I've written the, the play that I finished right before then was an, an extremely serious uh, uh, play that, has very few laugh lines in it. Okay. Um, so depending on the uh, the mood <laughs> that I'm in, possibly, right, or depending right, right. on uh, uh, the topic, I, I suppose I could have handled. I call it the man play, but uh, I could have handled that in a comedic manner. But it, it lent itself more to uh, the seriousness of the topic that I was uh, writing about then. But uh, in this, uh, the way that I thought about it. Um, and and the thoughts leading up to it, the creativity leading up to it, all lent itself to a, a comedy rather mm -hmm. than something serious. Mm -hmm. And I think I was ready to write a comedy because I'd written a couple of even for yourself, right? Yeah. I, I juggle it back and forth. Write too many serious things, I might get depressed. Yeah, well, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if you recall. You and I have talked about voice. I mean, in, mm -hmm. in the last go around, and. Uh, <clears throat> I think that there is a, a connection between the voice, like in a novel, and I don't know that we ever settle, is there voice to, as, as the, the playwright, if you have voice in your head when you're writing a character? Because really it's mostly dialogue. It is, and I do. Um, I, uh, being an actor as well, I play the parts as I'm writing. Right. So that's where your voice is. I'm, I'm speaking the parts, I'm seeing it on stage, I'm. Uh, and I'm not really doing blocking because that's, uh, uh, you know, 
that gets into a, a whole on, another element, but I, um, I get into the, each of the characters mm -hmm. uh, as, I, as I see them, right. you know. Of course, once the play goes out, you know, and a director gets a hold of it, then they may <laughs> come up with something totally different, and, yeah. and uh, that's just the way that it is yeah. in, uh, in that medium. I know the answer to this because just before we started, you, you told me, but I wondered if, before we came here, uh, you, you're the playwright. <clears throat> I wondered if you were also going to be the director, and in this case, you are not. No. Okay. No, I, I, I've directed, uh, well, once that I can remember, I think a couple of times, uh, once in college, and it was because it was required in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've written all my life uh, and written plays off and on all my life, and I've never directed any of them, don't care to. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's so much involved, you know, people don't realize what a director does, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much involved in that, and particularly in a small theater like here in McMinnville, the gallery, um, I mean, they, they do everything, they, you know, from designing sets to managing actors mm -hmm. to uh, in timelines, uh, you know, reading the, someone's script a hundred times so they, you know, understand every every piece of it, every syllable, so they can direct accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, quite frankly, that's a lot of time. You know, a lot of directors here, um, you know, they'll, they'll get a, a script a year in advance. And that's oh, how really? Long it no, takes. that I didn't know. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's, uh, and really that's just about anywhere. Uh, it's, it's quite a process uh, to be a director. When, when I was uh, much younger, <clears throat> uh, and when I thought about those kinds of things, in other words, uh, playing an instrument, mm -hmm. um, uh, being an actor, it seemed so easy because, gee, uh, you just pluck the right string or <laughs> hit the right key for, for the instrument or you, you just memorize your lines and then and you say them. Mm -hmm. And as I got older and I, and I well, let me use this uh, as an illustration. A famous actor was asked, and I, it may have even been George Clooney, but um, uh, he turned down a part. Whoever it was turned down this part. And the person who accepted the part won an Oscar. And so then he was asked later, uh, boy, aren't you sorry that you turned that down? You would have won an Oscar. <laughs> and he looked at the interviewer and he said, that's them. You know, that's what they brought to it. Mm -hmm. They made it that thing. It's not just the words on the page. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, and so I think you, in this case for the director, but, but for the actor too, you have to be somewhat of a storyteller. Um, and I, I'm only repeating what I think I understand from watching television. But uh, when somebody prepares for a role, uh, they go to a mental institution, mm -hmm. or they learn to play the guitar, or a race car driver, or whatever mm -hmm. it is, and uh, so that they're believable. It's not, it's not uh, robotic, you're just walking through and, and parroting the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, you're really kind of becoming, and I, so I'm rambling here, but I think that as the, uh, uh, as the author, and you talked about you playing the parts, I call it daydreaming, but, but don't you, you think for that moment you become that thing? Oh, very definitely. Uh you're in the moment, whatever yeah. you're doing. Yeah, you mentioned I play basketball, which I do. In the moment, you yeah. know, you don't think about making a shot or you don't think about making a pass because you know it's there. Right. And the same thing on stage. You are that actor, you are there in the moment. Same thing in writing. When I'm writing a character, I am that character. I'm in that moment. I'm, you know, you know and hopefully I stay in that for a while. If I don't, then I mm -hmm. drift out and, you know, Go, on, go down the hall to the kitchen and get myself a sandwich or something and come back and start over and again. get back in it. There. Right. But it's, uh, I, I think anything you, you want to do and you want to do it successfully, you, you need to be in that moment. And you mentioned, you know, going into a mental institution and so forth, and that's important. Uh, Stanislavski method, method acting, uh, or method anything if you're writing. Um, but just the knowledge of it, and if you're writing fiction, as I mostly write fiction, um, there's an element there where if you study enough about something and then you bring what you bring to that. Right. You know, you may not have been in um, 
you know, in, in Afghanistan during the war, but you can still write about that based on right. the experiences that you've heard or read or talked to individuals. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I had a neighbor who, um, he lived to be 95, 96 years old. He uh, was in the first wave storming the beach at Normandy, and he sure. was a great storyteller and never wrote anything, but he was, a, he, uh, orally he was, he was great. And uh, I was there. You know, I with him, I, with him yeah. when he was telling those stories, um, storming that beach at Normandy in that first wave when, you know, 25 percent of them made it. And um, so you don't need to actually be there in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. I think it has helped me. I write a lot about what I know, and that's what you should do, uh, experiences that I've had. And uh, and that's uh, and I'm a pretty good listener, and so by doing that, having both of those elements, I'm able to okay. create these characters, whether it's in a novel or in a play, um, or on stage. So, I, I, I think that there's a parallel here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try one anyway. Okay. You talked about playing basketball and being in the moment, not really thinking about it, but doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you're a musician, I think that you're not thinking about, in your case, maybe the drums or. Mm -hmm which string to pluck or something. And the reason for those is you've put all the work in already. You've practiced and practiced and practiced. And so you're not uh, thinking about that. You're thinking about what you want to produce in those cases. Mm -hmm. Now, as a writer, your practice, I think, in a sense, is the study. Or, I mean, certainly you've written. That's how you get there. But uh, uh, Back to the mental institution. Uh, if you go and have that experience and sort of absorb that, mm -hmm. now you don't have to do that anymore. Right. Now you can go back and write. That's like your practice. Mm -hmm. And that's already part of you. And so now you can just write and let that come out. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and with that, you know, using that met, uh, mental institution again, uh, you can see an individual on the street. Um, I, I love, my wife and I do this uh, a lot. We call it PWing, people watching. Yeah. And we'll, we'll sit and watch people, you know, for hours sometimes. And, um, and you'll see someone and they may have uh, some affliction, a mental affliction, and, and you extrapolate on that. As a mm -hmm. writer, I would extrapolate on that and sort of make up that life. You right. know, what, what type of life do they have? Sure. Uh, what, what drove, what drives their life at this point w with the inability or the disabilities that they have, mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, there's a lot mm -hmm. of that that goes in it as well. So it's it's being there. I've done that. Now I've experienced that. Now I can create right. because of that. Um, that can happen in a matter of seconds or a few minutes, or it might take a year or more. And, you know? and in your case, at least on those occasions, this is a conscious effort. You're observing consciously, mm -hmm. I oh, think yes. is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you're, and, and you're working at absorbing that, you're getting mm -hmm. it in. Yes, very definitely. So one of my writing teacher uh, said, uh, and I think this is analogous, uh, you don't have to kill somebody to write a murder mystery. No. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you can extrapolate, like you said. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you want to talk about death, maybe you haven't really experienced a death, but you lost your girlfriend, or you lost your doggy. Mm -hmm. And so now, what does that pain feel like? So think about that, amplify it, and how does that manifest? How does mm -hmm. it come out? Exactly. Um, death. I, I just wrote a, a, a one-act play about um, someone dying. Uh, and it takes place in a hospital room, and it's all the people in there. Uh, we, you've probably been there, you know, someone you know, close, distant, uh, laying in the hospital bed, sure. family, friends are, have gathered around. Sure. And uh, <clears throat> that happened uh, to me recently. A, a good friend passed, and, and uh, well, I walked into the room, and instantly there was a play rolling through my head <laughs> of... Uh, the interactions of the people, uh, the seriousness, the the laughing because they don't know what else to do. Nervous the, laughter. The maybe. Nervous laughter. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of those uh, situations that come to play lend itself to, a, you know, a great little one-act play sure. of uh, basically the psychological look or the sociological look at, at a group of people that have come together to pay their last respects. Yeah. 
and um, uh, you know so that I think you would have to experience because you know I've been in that situation several times when yes. you walk in that room so I I understand that feel this one happened to be a little bit different and and I maybe that's what jolted that and I went oh yeah this this is pretty good you yeah know? So. somebody again my teacher said being a writer is a license to snoop <laughs> and so you're yeah, in yeah. I mean you could be at uh, Rite Aid picking up your prescription and the guy in front of you triggers something oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. And one word one movement yeah. you know um, just depends on what kind of creative mood you're in I yeah. think well, let me, let me touch on that. So kind of back to mood, because we were talking about serious and comedy and so on. And, uh, and, and I said this last time we got together. For me, voice is so important. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, I think, uh, I, again, in, in my work, uh, you'll start something. M m you sort of know where you're going to go or you know what this is about, but the uh, nuts and bolts aren't there. Mm -hmm. And then you get that there's something that comes out funny mm -hmm. or there's something that comes out um, serious and then that sort of sets the tone for the way that you go having said that I heard a story about uh, Richard Burton who was in a play and obviously night after night did the same thing and he told a fellow actor he says tonight I'll make him cry and at some particular line he said it in a way and got that mm -hmm. reaction and then he said, but tonight I'm going to make him laugh. And he said the same line mm -hmm. a different way. So that's, that's the work of the actor right. and the skill of the actor the to skill, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Very definitely the skill to be able to uh, emote a line in a certain way that sure. creates you know, one extreme or the other. Yeah. Which brings me back to how fluid this is. It's not just hitting the right key. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Now, there's definitely a... A depth there, you know. When I'm writing, uh, and I've got a, I've got an idea in my head, and I like for becoming brandy. Right. Okay, equality. Ba -da -ba -da, da -da -da -da, looking at all these things, see, the, read the news articles, do these, uh, you know, observe people, uh, pull from memory, you know, and then I write a bunch of words down, and they're just a bunch of words. Mm -hmm. But there is a point where, and maybe that's getting in the moment that y you start adding that depth beyond that key. It's like getting into this typewriter right here. Here's the key, and you're going down through here, right. and getting in, and pretty soon you're, you're back up, and then you're on the page. But it's, it's going down several levels so that it actually has uh, some meaning to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, don't wanna, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I've seen some pretty good uh, shows on TV uh, when I've watched, um, and a lot of the comedy shows, uh, there's one comedy, I, uh, I don't know if it's a current one or not, I saw it on Netflix, uh, Who's That Girl, um, and very, very good writing, but there's not a lot of depth, and right. I think for that kind of writing, I'm, you know, you're, you're pumping these 22-minute scripts out right. on a daily basis, so there's probably not a lot of time. To do that, so that kind of writing is actually, you know, if you're clever and and you have a good vocabulary, you're, you're observant, um, you know, you can, you know, pump these things out pretty quick. To write something with depth does take uh, a little bit more, some meaning. And mm -hmm. You want a play or, or a novel or whatever you want, you want that to have uh, go beyond just the surface, and and that's uh, what any writer. You know, tries to do it. Aspires to, to do. do sure. Yeah, aspires to do. Sometimes it doesn't totally work that way. Uh -huh. You know. Norm, what's the the name of your one act play? Um, I really haven't named it. I, I why well, the working title was Waiting. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It just came out as good exercise. Okay. Well, and, then, I, might, and I, I was going to ask you, are we going to get to see that? Well, um, I. I was asked uh, last year um, to uh, that I should have a one act play for the the Salem festival they oh, have okay. a, um, play festival every year and uh, so maybe I'll run it over there turn you, it in there. you know um, I've just thought about that 
the, the, the limit, not the limitation, but, but the confines. So a one act play, but is there a time limit? I mean, is there, is there anything that's typical or standard? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm I'm not one of those people. Yeah. Um, I uh, and if I may do a little sidebar here. Absolutely. Uh, here's how not typical I am. I I had a contract one time. Was offered a contract for a book I wrote called uh, the Ten uh, Phil the Philosophy of Business: Ten Steps to Six How to Succeed in Business or something like that. Anyway, and they. And it was 180 pages, and and it was you know parsimonious. It was you know right cut right to the mm -hmm. chase, and that's what the whole theme of, of the book was. The publisher um, uh, said, "Well, our books are 250 pages, and they all were. You know, all all of this company was very successful in publishing 250 page right. manuals." And I said, I, "I'm sorry." That's 180 pages. I'm not going to write it. Right. So I, I turned down a, probably a fairly lucrative right. contract because you know, you know, the, in retrospect, I probably would just add on those extra pages, right. 70 pages. But now, but um, back then, I you know, same thing. I've just uh, that's how I write. Mm -hmm. So in one act, um, you know, this one act is uh, probably uh, um, 25. 20, 25 minutes long. Okay. Uh, but it all depends on how the action is, how the actors say their lines, how the director paces right. paces those lines, blocking if there's any. Yeah, I've I've heard that a screenplay plays out at about a minute a page. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, a play as well? No. I, well, you can do that. You can say that. I've I've said that before, and, uh -huh. and I've had directors slap me in the face. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, verbally say no, because you. Uh, you know, there might be a page where there's pauses and breaks and sure. and you know, uh, you know, visual things that are going on, and it might take three minutes. You know, so uh, but typically, and I think that's a more of a business term, a minute a page. Okay. You know, in a screenplay, uh, having written a couple of screenplays, uh, you know, there you, you have to get get your business done and get it done in a timely manner because it's, there's a lot of money writing on that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I usually, you know, I used to look at it more as a, as a minute a page, but now I just, however it turns out. You just write it. I just write it. And I'm just the writer. You know? Just baloney. <laughs> um, we're real close here. We're going to oh, run okay. out of time, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you, are you, is, is the play that is going to be at Gallery, is that, do you look at that as a collaboration? In other words, are you going to work with the director? I am actually going to work with okay. the director on this. I, some directors say, go out away. Of my face, go, right. go away. You're welcome to come see it when it's done. Yeah. Um, other directors uh, I've worked with, they want me right there. Um, Steve Cox is directing this, and he has invited me to join in, and this is good because this will take it to the next level. I'm, uh, last night in auditions, I saw two things that I was going to change immediately okay. before they start sure. uh, rehearsals. So. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, again. This was your work, and and until you present it to the world, it's sort of in the confines. And I think at least the writing that I've done, um, somewhat insulated. And then it gets out there. Maybe hear somebody else read it. In my case, mm -hmm. or act it in your case, mm -hmm. and uh, you think, oh wait a minute, that the cadence is off. For right, that could be misinterpreted or whatever exactly. the thing is. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. Um and with plays, I, I have uh, a uh, stable of actors that I call on to do reads, table okay. reads, and okay. uh, and I didn't catch the the two right. things I saw last night in the two table reads we did of this play prior to okay. this production. So good. Uh, real quick, Norm, uh, becoming Brandy, mm -hmm. August. What is it? August second, third, and fourth, Gallery yeah, Theater. At the Gallery Theater, uh -huh. McMinnville. McMinnville. Um, we sort of made a pact last time that we're going to go have coffee. Can we do that this time? Let's do that. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. It's great to have you. Great to have you. Yeah. Hey, folks, that's uh, The Writing Life. I'm Stephen W. Long. Uh, you can go to my website, stephenwlong.com. Uh, let me know if you have somebody that you'd like to see on the show, possibly a topic that uh, we can discuss. And uh, other than that, we'll just see you next time. Thanks so much.
What do you think? We done? I don't know. You guys want to do one yeah, just with yourself as long as they think the we're done? No, they got no, enough. They no. got enough. They got enough? Probably. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Let's go have, let's go lunch. I'm, oh. a, I'm <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Yeah, I can just bite too.